for the ultimate in thinking differently. Please welcome Jody Gregg. I remember being inspired by a quote that said, teaching children is an accomplishment. Getting children excited about learning is an achievement. In today's information rich and so social media crazy generation, you can understand why for some children, learning at school is just not that interesting. Playing games online or sharing funny cat videos seems so much more interesting than dull lessons on binary. <laughs> I can already see half the audience glaze over. About five years ago, I was a teacher of computer science in secondary schools in Scotland. It was about the time that the first iPad was released, and technology was evolving rapidly, and the curriculum was playing catch-up. At the same time, I started to perform close-up magic at weddings and parties. As the hired performer, it was my job to work my way around the tables and entertain the guests. However, the guests had no emotional attachment or investment in me or my performance because they had not booked me. I had to win them over and get them interested quickly. That's when the penny dropped for me. What happened, what, what if I could take what I was learning in the world of entertainment and apply it in the classroom? By combining my passion for education and magic, I could start to think differently. And if I was thinking differently, I could teach differently engage more students, and get children excited about learning. The same challenge applies to me today. How can I get you interested in what I have to say? If you were standing here in my shoes, how would you create a sense of engagement? How would you get the interest of such a smartly dressed, good-looking, and intelligent audience? I like to start with a warm-up exercise. So if we could all put our hands out, arms nice and straight and hands out like this, that would be brilliant. Thumbs facing up the way. Excellent. And if we could turn our arms round so their thumbs are facing down. Brilliant. Lift up your left hand, bring it over, and bring it down, and interlock your fingers just like that. Can we touch our index fingers together? Perfect. On the count of three, go one, two, three, and just straighten out your arms. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're wondering how did I do that and you're interested to learn more. I want to play a game involving numbers. The lady there with the, 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 the pad and the pen, would you be so kind to help me out? You can remain seated. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to attempt to calculate your birth date, okay? But to be tactful, um, not the month or the year, okay? But first, can I just ask you something? What star sign are you? Aquarius. Aquarius. Can I just say, I don't believe in any of that stuff. <laughs> Us Scorpios are known to be very skeptical. <laughs> I'm going to show you... Um, Five slides in a moment. Um, so, your birth date. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to write that down, and you can show the person next to you. Okay? Not so. If it was the seventh of May, you would just write down seven. Does that make sense? It's not the seventh of May, is it? That's good. Excellent. Right. If you could do that now, I'll turn away. Is it all right? Can I turn back? Excellent. I'm going to show you five slides with random numbers. Okay? And I want you to look at each slide. And if your number is on it, you say yes. If it's not, you say no. All right? So, slide A. Do you see your birthday on slide A? I do. You do. How about B? No. C. D. 
and E. No. <laughs> I think I may have it. For the first time, can you reveal what your number is? It's 20. 20. Ladies and gentlemen, 20. In case you're wondering how I did that, the truth is binary. The number you see here, 10100, is the binary number for 20. Don't have to take my word for it, I will prove it, all right? This is my version of a famous trick that you may have come across in a cracker, and I'll show you how it works, all right? I showed you, to begin with, five slides, slides A through to E. Now, for the purpose of this explanation, we'll take the number 27. As you can see, 27 is on A, B, D, and D. To calculate 27, all I have to do is add up the number in the top left-hand corner of all slides that have 27. 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1, 27. Now, back to your birth date. If the slide had your number on it, I'd put a 1. If it never, I'd put a 0. All I had to do was remember the number in the top left-hand corner of all of these slides. So I know the number in the top left-hand corner of E is 1, D is 2, C is 4, 8, and 16. An easy to remember pattern that doubles. The numbering system for binary. To calculate 20, all I had to do was add up the columns that had the 1, which was 16 and 4, to give you 20. Yay. Most people see that and think, so what? And I would agree. Until we start to realize that binary is the building blocks for all technology. What do these devices have in common? They all use binary to store information. Binary is a numbering system that uses ones and zeros. One for on and zero for off. All your games, your mobile apps, your photographs, your videos and your songs, all at the lowest level use binary. Humans, we humans, we have thousands of languages, but computers only have one, or zero. <laughs> For me, magic is the creative tool that I use to engage. It is the glue, the glue that holds and brings together knowledge and understanding and real life applications. Learners must know what they're learning is relevant to their world outside of the classroom. Magic captures the imagination. It creates a natural curiosity for learning. It allows us to make meaning from direct experience. And I've been overwhelmed at how effective it is for engaging children and getting them excited about learning. Solving self-working magic tricks requires computational thinking and maths. It encourages the learners to go past just the answer and explore the logic that proves the outcome. This provides a wonderful alternative to traditional assessment because learners can display their knowledge and understanding through the performance of a magic trick. Professor Richard Wiseman and a team of researchers carried out a study and concluded that teaching children to perform magic tricks developed skills and confidence self-esteem and empathy. So marked were the improvements 
that they suggested that magic should be added to the national curriculum. It doesn't matter, though, if you're not a budding magician. The idea is you just have to be creative and find a glue that works for you. <laughs> to quote Sir Ken Robinson, he says that creativity is the greatest, greatest gift of human intelligence. He goes on to say that the more complex the world becomes, the more creative we have to be to meet its challenges. We may not be able to predict the future, but we will shape it. We have to prepare students for jobs that have not been created and products that have not been invented. And one of the most powerful ways to develop creativity within our students is to be a role model and teach with imagination. I'm going to finish now with something that I know all of you hold dear to your hearts. Data randomization and probability. <laughs> now, because this is based on probability, I will probably get it wrong, all right? And if I do, it's all right, my time will be up, I will do my vanishing acts. <laughs> We're going to generate a four-digit random number. And I have here nine frisbees numbered one to nine. They are soft. I'm going to throw them out, but they do fly quite fast. So we'll just we'll try this. I'll throw the first one out. Oh, and another. Oh, see, but do you know something? It's probably easier if I just pass them out. You just pass them down. Brilliant. Just pass them around randomly. Whilst that's happening, I need somebody that looks trustworthy. Sir there, do you know anybody? You, you'll, you'll do. Um, could you give me an order of colours? We've got yellow, blue, and red, so in any order. Blue, red, and yellow. Blue, red, and yellow. If you're holding a, a blue frisbee, can you hold it in there, please? So we've got one, five, and nine. What number would you like? One. One. Perfect. The person holding number one, can you put it on the floor? That's out of the game. Perfect. Red. A four, an eight, and a three. three. Three is out of the game. And yellow. Seven, two, and six. Two. two. Out of the game. Had you chosen a different order of colors, that would be a completely different number. Okay? Let's do that again. We have two blues left. Can I see the two blues? What one would you like? We've got, sorry, nine and a five. Nine. nine. That's out of the game. Red. Eight, four. And yellow. Six and... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Six and seven. seven. Seven, perfect. And finally, that leaves us with three frisbees. What do we have left? Blue is a five. Red is a four, and yellow is a six. We're going to add them up to create a random number. Five carry one, and six carry one. Is that right? One, six, six, five. Is that right? <laughs> Was that right? I just need to double check that, make sure there's not been an, an accident. We've got six, 15, 16, yep, correct. Brilliant. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment, okay? Had I started today with uh, learning outcomes, saying that we're going to talk about um, pedagogical methodologies, interdisciplinary learning and computational creativity, I think I would have probably lost you in a heartbeat. Instead, I decided to follow the advice of Benjamin Franklin 
and involve you. <laughs> Our randomly generated number? If I told you that I knew what that would be, you wouldn't believe me. Unless, of course, I told you that that is how I would teach invariance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today and share my ideas on how to engage children creative, uh, creatively and get them excited about learning. Thank you very much. Yeah.